yeah, we can move on to offensive line minimal. Yeah, Let's last, last, last. Um, first of all, we have uh, Panay Sewell and Rashawn Slater one and two in that order. The tackles out of Oregon and Northwestern, respectively. Panay Sewell, yeah, yeah, I have him higher because he has the upside. And he, the thing with Rashawn Slater is Rashawn Slater has everything that Panay Sewell, Sewell doesn't have. But Panay Sewell can gain the things that Rashawn Slater has. Rashawn Slater can't gain the things that Panay Sewell has. Um, P- Rashawn Slater, he's a great guy. Great footwork, great hands and feet, great at maintaining um, his blocks, all that. I just think he can never move as fast as Panay Sewell can. And that's why I'm going to give the edge to Panay Sewell. And also Panay Sewell is just stronger. He has the, he has the athletic ceiling. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think uh, there's nothing to question here with Panay Sewell at number one. And then number two, Rashawn Slater, also nothing to really question. Can play multiple positions. And it was also learned uh, today, I also learned today that Panay Sewell is also training to be right tackle as well, so he can become multi, multifaceted. So, um, yeah, the, the, it's always good to, to play multiple positions on the line. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, top two, undisputed in my opinion. So, Talking about multiple positions, though, Amal. Elijah Vera Tucker, the guy out of USC. He's another first round tackle for a uh, first round offensive line prospect. He's an all pro guard who can play pretty good tackle play as well. And uh, his tape was honestly boring, Amal. You have him at three, I have him at four. Uh, we're splitting hairs um, pretty much. He's boring in a good way. He's patient. He's elite pass blocker, versatility because he lines up wherever you want him to, probably other than center. Um, the one thing I didn't like about him, and it's very much nitpicking. He wasn't the, an elite mover. Uh, he's not the fastest guy in space, but he's good enough. And if he's playing interior offensive line, he doesn't need to be the fastest mover. He just needs to get, uh, get to the spot before, you know, the defense gets there and he can do that more than like, well enough. So, um, yeah, Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC, pretty good. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with everything you just said. Um, Elijah Vera Tucker, I'd consider him more of a guard, but he could play center as well, I believe, and he's pretty decent at tackle, so he can play, honestly, all three if you really wanted him to. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, he does all three pretty well. He was in college, so, uh, yeah, uh, I'm a fan of what Elijah Tucker does. Yeah, and number four, we have Tevin Jenkins. I have him at three, so he's a top three prospect above Elijah Tucker for me, and you have him at five. Tevin Jenkins, he's just a mean guy. Like he has the tenacity you like to see in an offensive lineman. He has the offensive lineman mentality. He likes to hit. He has great hands and great feet. Um, one thing that might be a knock, and it's not even a knock. He's a right tackle. Like I, I like, and the thing is, left defensive ends end up being the better defensive end these days anyway because they're. They're trying to play against the worst tackles. So at the end of the day, he's probably going to end up going against the best pass rusher on the other team. And he's just a phenomenal tackle. Uh, he might be more of a right tackle, but I just love everything you get for him. His hand usage, he's mean, good play strength. Uh, I just love everything about him. Pretty good mobility as well. He's just tenacious. Yeah, so for me, the only weakness that I saw in Tevin Jenkins that put me lower than where I had him was I thought – his balance was kind of off when I saw him. I agree with that actually. Yeah. So that, I think that that was probably the only thing that I had a problem with. But otherwise, yeah, quickness is there. He, powerful, my gosh. Um, very quick, like I said before. Um, but yeah, he can, I think as a right tackle, he's probably the best right tackle in this draft. So uh, yeah, I, and I, I have him as the third best tackle in this class. Period. So yeah, take yeah, that with yeah, whatever so, you'd yeah. like. Um, at number four or number five, rather, we have Christian Darisaw. I have him at six. You have him at four above Tevin Correct. Jenkins. Darisaw, he, he's an athlete and he knows how to put it all together. He, um, he's a running game monster, maintains his blocks really well. He's pretty good movement and power for a guy of his, uh, his size. What I didn't like about him was it's a tale of two different players. Like if he's playing against elite competition, it looks like he's the best, like best tackle in this class. But if he's not, then he just seems to slack. He seems to be kind of lazy in my opinion. And we'll see if that he can work out of that in the NFL. And also another thing, um, 
he struggled against faster guys. I remember off the edge. And I think that's not a factor of like him not being able to keep up with them. I think his footwork coming off the block, it was just a bit choppy and slow. And if he can work on that, then that shouldn't be an issue in the pros, but I love him out of, um, out of Virginia tech for sure. Yeah. So the only reason I had him higher was the awareness. Awareness was uh, elite. That's why I, I, uh, I mean, uh, that, uh, he had great balance as well, great length. And then, yeah, I, the awareness was just on point from when I, when I saw film. So that's why mm-hmm. I have Darius higher. Yeah, and um, going to interior offensive lineman now. So Landon Dickerson is our consensus six. You have him at seven. I have him at five in my top five. And honestly, he'd be higher, but we're, I'm keeping injuries into consideration here because he's had four season engine ending injuries. I'm all ACLs, Achilles. Like, I don't even know what injuries he's had, but he's had everything. Um, but other than his injuries, I don't really see a flaw in his game. Maybe his balance as well, slightly. He also but plays his, center and guard, yeah. He plays center guard at high levels for Alabama. He has the leadership ability as well. He lo- he was looked up to. This guy tore his ACL and still came in and played a playoff game. Um, I think this year or last year, one of the two. Last Phenomenal year. player. He'd be a round one player, but he, I knock him down to round two due to his injuries. But he, he's That's just great. a phenomenal mo- – he's just a monster in, all, uh, yeah, in you, the center. You, yeah, you got it right. I, I agree with that analysis. Mm-hmm. Uh, number seven, uh, another center, uh, Creed Humphrey out of Oklahoma. Again, he's very boring. Um, I think what he's good at, he's a very elite pass protector. So if you need someone to protect someone in the middle, he can do that very well. He has a good base, base good understanding of leverage. His head is always on a swivel, so awareness as well. Uh, might, might be a knock. Is, um, I think he lacks elite strength and movement, but – Again, he, he played in the SEC, I believe, and he, he was phenomenal. So um, I don't know how big of a knock that could be. And yeah, again, I, think, uh, I think we got that right as well. Yeah, he can move on. Yeah. Um, number seven, eight, Liam Eikenberg, the tackle out of Notre Dame. Um, you have him at number eight. So you can talk about him, Amal, because you have him higher than I do. I have him at 10. Yeah, so another guy that I would like the Colts to tar- target, Liam Eichenberg. Liam Eichenberg, for me, uh, he's got great – He's, I think he's a prototypical type of left, ta- left tackle. Uh, th- my only weaknesses with him, I, I liked, um, liked his balance. Uh, I, he, he, it, there's some flaws, but I didn't see that too much. But the ability – I liked his ability. His angles uh, when working up on the second level, level i saw that or i don't know if you can see that in his game uh but i was also a fan of that he's probably gonna he's probably gonna start a right tackle even though he played left tackle uh at uh, notre dame i think he's probably gonna be one of those guys that transitions towards the right side because of uh because of uh his job and uh i think because of the way he positions himself as a pass protector so yeah, mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, he's very technically sound. He knows how to use his hands and his feet, and he's good at anchoring. He's just not an elite athlete, so that's why I'd probably put him at ten. But I think at my tank, with my tackle rankings, he's ranked at number five. Uh, number, yeah, number five for me. So, um, number nine, Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan. I have him at. I have him at. Where do I have him? I have him at thirteen. You have him at six, so you're really high on him. So again, take the floor, Mo. I want to hear why you're high on him. Yeah. So Jalen Mayfield for me he could have honestly been higher, but my my main thing with Jalen Mayfield is he, he, I loved I loved his uh his inside positioning. Uh, he's got a square build, great strength, great balance. His foot quickness is is okay. Okay, but I like the leverage that he brings to his game, strong hands. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just like I, th- I thought of him as a very effective uh, offensive tackle. And I think he's going to be a day one. I think he'll be picked in the first round as well. I think uh, teams are also seeing what I see in him. I think he's a, he's a very, very strong uh, guy, a strong offensive tackle that doesn't have that many weaknesses. 
I think the only weakness that I could potentially see, yeah, is probably quickness, a foot quickness. I think, uh, but I, that's, and that's only in the passing game. I see that as a, as a potential weakness, but I, I think, uh, I think he, he, he's very consistent and I think mm-hmm. he's, he, he looks like it. He looks the part. Okay. So I have him at 12, 13 and I agree with everything you said. I'm going to include the fact that he's a very physical run blocker. He loves to hit in the run game. What I don't like about him and it's why he's the number 13. And it's not that I don't like it. It's just, I think his sample size is way too small. He only played two games in 2020 and in 2019, he got beat badly by like, he played an elite gauntlet of pass rushes like Chase Young, Shaka Tony, Yator Gross Matos. Like he got beat by all these guys uh, last year in 2019. I think he has all the tools to be a good player, which is why I have him uh, like as a one to two uh, round player. So I like him. I just not as high on him as you are. Um, number 10, Samuel Cosme, the tackle out of Texas. You have him at 11. I have him at 12. Um, what I like about him, length, size, I like his recovery athleticism, and he's a great pass blocker. What I don't like is his suddenness. And also, it's going to be a common trend with these later tackles, but I think upper body strength, I think he lacked that. Similar to like another guy like Dylan Radunes lacks it out of um, NDSU. And again, you could just put them on some of that nice special sauce and you know help them gain some weight. They're going to lift a dumbbell in the NFL and they'll gain like 15 pounds magically in an unhumanly amount of time like it'll it'll happen and i think he'll be fine yeah I think, he's I think an athlete you got that one right yeah mm-hmm. I, I have nothing else to add to that okay alex leatherwood 11 you have him at nine i have him at 14 his athleticism definitely shows off and again similar to jalen mayfield he's a run blocking mauler and mauler loves to hit what i didn't like about him was i honestly just think he might be too big like his speed his speed in the run game is okay, but his speed in the pass game is just terrible. I think he gets beat by speed way too often around the edge. And his recovery athleticism, because he's too big and his feet are too like, you know, clonky and too big for him, he just doesn't have it. So that's why I have him ranked a bit lower at 14. But I think his athletic measurables, if he loses some weight, I think he can be a phenomenal player. Yeah, I think I, I think you got that for the most part, right? I think um my main thing, I feel like his mobility here. Uh, I don't know you're going to mention Deontay Brown. I think you're probably going to talk about him later mm-hmm. on. But uh, I, 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 see, I, I see a lot of mobility in him. Short area explosiveness, I see that as well. Uh, and I think he's also one of those guys that are multi, multi, uh, multi-positional uh, guard and tackle. So that's why um, I'm a bit higher on him than you. Yeah, those weaknesses are there, but I think mm-hmm. that's all. Uh, he like obviously, I think finishing blocks. I think that's probably like I'm. I'm not. I'm going to compare him, for example, to Tevin Jenkins. Tevin Jenkins is a beast at finishing blocks. You saw that on film, and I think Alex Leatherwood could improve on that. But um, but yeah, Leatherwood. He, I I I mean that's fixable. Finishing blocks is definitely mm-hmm. fixable. So. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, what I'm seeing because yeah, he plays multiple positions here. Fair enough. Um, Dylan Radunes out of NDSU is 12 for us. You have him at 12, I have him at 11, so pretty similar ranking. What I like about him, I like his length, size, combo, his strong base, great pass blocker, and he's another Pro Bowl guy. I'm all who, um, he needs to go to the Pro Bowl and prove that he could face elite competition. And he's he was kind of suspect day one, but day two he senior definitely figured it out. Bowl. Senior, senior bowl. bowl, yeah. Sorry, yeah, not yeah. Pro Day. He's a Senior Bowl monster, and um, he showed that he could play against elite competition. And again, my only flaw with him was I think his speed, um, his speed I guess against the edge wasn't the best, but also yeah, his strength wasn't there. But again he'll eat a burger after he takes some special sauce and he'll gain like 15 pounds. So he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good enough for me. You can move on. Um, 13 Wyatt Davis out of Ohio state interior offensive lineman. Um, I have him at 15. You have him, I believe at 14. So again, pretty similar rankings. Um, he pushes up to 13 cause he just has a higher average, but 
what I liked about Wyatt Davis, his tenacity, his power in the run game. He's definitely a more power run game based guy. Um, his hand placement in the run game was good. His strength, unlike the previous guys, is good from the interior uh, interior spot. And he definitely gets off the block. He really can play fast. right guard or right tackle as well. I, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I believe he can do that as well. What I didn't like is, again, he's a bigger guy. So why I like him in the power run game is because the power run game doesn't lack, uh, doesn't need as much speed. Uh, he doesn't have the greatest speed. And that's why I think he's more of a power run guy game, a run guy, yeah, run game guy, my bad. Um, but yeah, his, his, uh, his, I guess his speed and his quickness isn't the best when it comes to that type of run gaming. Um, and also he had some injury issues. I believe he has, he tweaked his knee, I believe. So that's probably yeah. something worth talking about, but yeah. otherwise, yeah, I like him. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, you, you, you got most of that, right? I think inside yeah, his inside zone, I think he's laterally pretty quick. Um. Uh. Yeah, I think he's a great run blocker, Reed. But I think that's that's where his game. That's where I think that's his bread and butter. Uh. Yeah, um. I expect him to probably be playing right guard, but he can also play right tackle. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and now Maul is a very intriguing prospect. Very intriguing. Another Stanford guy, Walker Little, the tackle out of Stanford, and he's interesting because. He was injured in 2019 and then COVID happened. So you're really going off his 2018 film. I believe he tore his ACL in 2019, right? Yeah. What what you saw in 2018 though, uh, you saw great footwork, great pass blocking. Again, another guy who his, his fundamentals are very strong. He knew how to anchor well. He knew how to use his hands and all of that. He liked his intelligence. Again, his head is always on a swivel. His awareness was there. But again, his his flaw is that we haven't seen him play in two years. His injury concerns are there, torn ACL. And I think his his power and his strength was a little bit questionable. So, but otherwise, I think he could be a uh, he could be an elite pass protector at the next level. It just his question marks are injury. Yeah, but uh yeah, I, I can see that. Um I think again, so for me, Walker Little, he 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 did get injured many times uh, throughout his entire college career, and there's not too much film on him. But I think the dude, he's an ex- excellent run blocker, Reeb. I think uh, I think he, he can take on the double teams as well pretty well. Uh, and I think uh, he's um, – I don't know how to say this, but he can take off the pressure pretty well. And um, – there's not many weaknesses that I see in his game other than health. I think he honestly the same role as a Christian Dare. So, um, but I think the main thing with him is health. So we just got to see more from him. He's only played uh, 72 snaps uh, this past year. So that's nothing. That's like one game, yeah. maybe two games. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't judge so much on that. So Agreed. Okay. Number 15. I think it's just going to de facto be James Hudson because you haven't watched the two guys I haven't, I want to talk about, and I haven't watched one of the guys you want to talk about. So James Hudson at 15. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's probably going to be James Hudson for me. Uh, so for me, James Hudson, I thought James Hudson, like I, I've already talked about him many times before. Fun fact about James Hudson, he transitioned from a, being a defensive end in high school to becoming an offensive tackle. I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, and I think him as a pro- – he's a project prospect uh, at the end of the day. We, we already talked about that with him. So he is quite raw. But I think, uh, you know, I think uh, he has the potential to become something special. Like, obviously, the concerns are there. I think he needs to control his weight. I think uh, that's definitely a thing. I think he could probably add 10 more pounds. Uh I think, um, yeah, he needs to become more athletic. I think I don't know how he can do that, uh, but yeah, um, he he's in a very intriguing prospect for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has all the measurables. Yeah, I why say. he's powerful, explosive. Yeah, I, I mean, he, there's not. I can't really play on radar and is and is a sleeper. I can definitely see him falling to day three. Uh, I, I, I'm higher on him, but 
I, I could definitely see him falling to day three. Yeah, he's like around two to three guy for me. Um, okay, finally, we're going to hit on our two guys who just missed the cut. Uh, two of them didn't miss the cut for me. Um, I had Trey Smith, the tackle out of Tennessee, at number eight. And then I had De- uh, the, he's a guard, my bad. Um, and then Deontay Brown, the guard out of Alabama at nine. And what I like about Trey Smith, he has versatility. He can play every single position on the line. He's a great guard, great tackle, and he can play center as well. He's great strength, anchoring people. He knows how to move bodies in the run game. Um, what I didn't like about him, I thought his hands were kind of in- inconsistent and his speed um, wasn't all there. But I think when it comes to just the versatility he brings you, I have him really high at number eight because of that. And I think he can be a really good pass blocker. And as well as just, I think what you get from him, his strength and all that, I think he can be a pretty good run blocker as well. I think he's probably going to be more of a guard because of his lack of speed, but uh, I like him uh, at that often interior offensive line spot or air tackle, wherever you play, he'll be good. I, I see him sort of as like an Elton Jenkins from the Packers where he plays like every single position. And then Deontay Brown out of Alabama. Holy crap. This guy, he's like, okay, first of all, to preface this, he's like 350 pounds. So he is extremely extremely big and my one negative on him is that he's just fat that's all i have written down fat he's fat that's my negative and that's you, you can assume what that means he's slow but um from a guard position where you don't have to be all that fast i think he moves pretty fast for a guy who's fat like he moves really fast for someone who's 350 pounds uh, his anchoring ability is there in the past game again he has the power he's bigger than everyone so he shouldn't have that power um He's a run game mauler, pass game mauler. It's just someone that big shouldn't be able to move that fast. And I believe that if he does slim down and get even faster, he could be phenomenal in, from uh, from the offensive guard spot. So that's what I like about those two guys. And then I guess you got your last guy as well. Uh, yes, I do. Um, my 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 last guy is also kind of I, I would consider him somewhat under the radar. I, I don't know if, if uh, would you consider him to be Quinn Miners? I, um, I, I don't. I would think he is. But I think he's under the radar for most people. I don't know if he's under the radar for like NFL draft gurus because I think a lot of people have him going like late day two. Really? Um, yeah, from what I've seen, he's definitely like a late day two to day three guy. But um, from what I've seen, but again, you're the guy who's watched his film. So let us know what you saw from Quinn Miners out of, where is he from? Like Bowling Green or like, I don't even know. He's like some random college. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I, yeah, he went to, I believe he, he's a D3 prospect, I believe. No, Reed? Uh, yeah. He, go, he goes to Wisconsin Whitewater. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I mean, I guess that's in Wisconsin. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's the only thing that you could say. But I think this is kind of like the not the germ, um, like the Kyle Duggar pick from the New England Patriots, right? Is it's a D? It's, it's you're picking guys that are like extremely small school, but like thing, right? The dude is not. Um, he's got great leverage. Got a. Uh, and his game does translate to the NFL. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's another senior. Easy to say Morgan. that when you're playing D three. Yeah, uh, I mean, as a run blocker, he's a he's great. As a pass protector, he does pretty good. Uh, I mean, the only thing, yeah, he he's D three. That's my only concern with him is competition. So, uh, but yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I think his senior bowl guy. performance is yeah. the only way that you can touch him. Yeah, his senior bowl performance from what I've heard again, I've never watched him because I don't have all the time to watch all these boring offensive linemen. But Quinn Miners, from what I've heard from all the draft gurus that I follow and you know subscribe to, they all said his senior bowl was really good along with Dylan Redunes, and that's why th- those two those guys are moving up, up exactly. Yeah, because they face competition and they prove that they could play um pretty high. But yeah, 